Inside this box is literally Apple's vision for the future. I know that's an awful pun, but it's true. It's February 2nd, launch day for the Apple Vision Pro, and my pre-order finally came in. My $3,700 pre-order. Well, really it's $3,500, but after taxes it was closer to $3,750. But either way, it's finally here, and I'm excited to unbox it with you guys and find out whether the Vision Pro is actually worth it. So I guess without further ado, let's just dive right into it. I've been anticipating this thing for months, and it's finally here. It's kind of crazy. So as with pretty much every other Apple product, you've got a little pull tab there on the exterior packaging. This is actually the shipping packaging. There we go. And I'm sure it's gonna have this nice opening mechanism like it does. The Apple Vision Pro, right here in the center of the box. That's wild. I can't believe I actually have this. This is one of those things that I never thought Apple would ever release. It's a VR headset essentially, or they call it a spatial computing device, which I think is ridiculous. It's just another word for VR headset. I was not seeded this by Apple. I actually spent the money on it. However, if Apple ever wants to seed me stuff in the future, I'm not gonna say no. Is there anything in these smaller boxes here? No, nothing. This is not something I ever saw Apple releasing. A VR headset, that just seems so out of this world for Apple, but I am really excited to see whether this ends up taking off and becoming like the new iPhone or whether it flops. They rarely have flops, but they do have flops. So it's gonna be interesting to see whether this $3,500 headset at the low end, this is the cheapest headset you can buy, flops. So far though, from what I can tell, it seems like you can't actually buy one of these on launch day. You actually have to wait at least two to three weeks, possibly into March to get one of these for yourself. So at least the initial stock is sold out. But before we dive into the unboxing, let's take a look at the box itself. On the front of the box, you've got the Vision Pro headset and this beautiful white backdrop. On the sides, you've got Apple Vision Pro in silver. Then on the back, it says 256 gigabytes, which is the cheapest version you can get, and obviously the version that I got. It came in at $34.99. The next step up is 512 gigabytes at $36.99. And then the one terabyte version of the device, which after taxes, you're gonna be paying well over $4,000, uh, comes in at $38.99. And that's without any kind of protection. I didn't get any kind of Apple Care on this. Maybe a mistake, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna keep this headset yet. I'm gonna test it out for about a week, give you guys a full review after that. Uh, and then decide whether I'm gonna keep it or not. So if you're interested in that at all, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I drop videos like this and a bunch of other tech videos on this channel every week. I'd love to have you here. With that being said, let's find the pull tabs, which look like they're on the sides of the box, pull them off and see what the actual Vision Pro headset looks like. Like I said, this was not seated to me, so I wasn't invited to any of those Apple events, which means I've never seen this headset in person. So I'm probably more excited about it than a lot of people, at least a lot of other reviewers out there, because I have no idea what it's gonna feel like or look like in hand. So here we go, ooh, wow, look at that. Oh, it's got a new tech smell, I love that. That's crazy. I mean, it's about the same size as a regular VR headset, I'm not gonna lie. Put it off to the side. I wanna see what else we get inside the box. It looks like we've got the Vision Pro paperwork up here and maybe the cables or something like that that say designed by Apple in California. Let's pull these out. The bottom one is, you got a polishing cloth too, nice. All right, wasn't this like a $20 thing if you bought it on Apple's website? This one might be exclusive, it is. This one's exclusive to the Vision Pro. It's got the Vision Pro text there at the bottom. I hate opening products like this because my plan initially was to return it because it's so expensive. But when you open it up and you see the quality of some of the stuff, you're like, dang, man, I don't know if I want to return this. I might want to keep it. But really, it all depends on whether I can actually use this in my day-to-day -day life and whether it's not just a stupid tech toy that I, I bought for a video. Next up, it looks like we've got the, the Light Seal cushion, which I think there's already one attached to the headset, uh, but this might be a different option. It says, use this Light Seal cushion if prompted by the system or you need more room for a better fit. Okay, good to know. We've got the Vision Pro paperwork, it looks like. I mean, we've already got some paperwork there, but this looks like the actual startup guide. Oh, it's like a really nice booklet. Well, for $3,400, 35, 37, realistically, it should be a, a really nice booklet, giving you some instructions on how to use it. It doesn't open very wide though, so keep that in mind. I'm really interested to see how this looks on someone's face because obviously it's not an actual glass pass-through. It's a screen showing what's behind the, uh, the device itself. So that'll be interesting to see. I've heard things about it that aren't great. So I'm excited to see whether it lives up to the uh, the infamous hype or whether it's actually decent. And also, I think that in the future, what Apple's trying to do is just create glasses that have an interface like actually on the lenses themselves. So that's probably what they're going for eventually. Obviously that's years out, but still. Uh, next up, we've got the dual loop band, which apparently is another band option if um, the actual standard band doesn't work on your head. This is the over the top headband right there, which you can attach, which actually feels Really nice quality. And then finally, we've got the power adapter right here, if I can pull it out. Power adapter right here, smaller than I expected. You've got your USB-C to Type-C cable right there. And then you've also got the battery pack, the infamous battery pack. So I've seen online that people have actually been able to remove the cable from the battery pack with a, uh, a SIM removal tool. And they were able to see that inside the connector that connects this cable to the battery pack is like a super large lightning adapter, which I thought was kind of funny. This battery pack is pretty heavy. 
significantly heavier than my phone. I literally can't find my phone right now for some reason. Doesn't make sense to me, but it was somewhere in here. This room's a mess. I'm just hiding it with all the camera angles. It's a smaller battery than your phone, and it's also heavier than your phone. I wonder if that's because of the case that they're, they have it in. It's a beautiful case, so I love the, the feel of it. You can also plug it directly into a power outlet while you're using it. You can't hot swap batteries, which is unfortunate. This is the way you connect it to your, uh, your Vision Pro. It's kind of a, a locking cable, which I thought was kind of interesting because say this gets caught on something, say you don't have this in your back pocket, it gets caught on something, it'll like whip your head back. I thought they would have used like a MagSafe or something like that, but they didn't, they used a locking cable. Now let's get into the headset itself. The part that we're all the most excited about seeing, definitely front heavy, way more front heavy than I expected. I have a decent amount of VR headsets. If you guys have checked out my, um, my channel before, you will have noticed that I've dropped reviews on not only the PlayStation VR 2, but also on the MetaQuest 3, which is one of my favorite headsets that's dropped in a long time. Make sure to check out my review if you haven't yet. But let's pull off this little uh, fabric cover on the front. Now, I didn't get the case that comes with this. You have to buy it separately. Everyone who was seated one from Apple, I believe, did get the case, and they look good. I kind of regretted not getting it. Really, really high quality. I know everyone says that, but genuinely it does. Like, this is all metal. It kind of feels like an oversized Apple Watch. Really shiny glass in the front. You could probably see my messy studio in the glass. You've got this really nice, um, I guess light shield right here and face pillow, as I like to call it. And of course, you've got the single loop band on the back. Interestingly enough, the only inputs on the device itself are this button on the top and this uh, digital crown, I think is the official name. On the bottom, we've got air intakes. And then on the top, you've got where the air comes out. Oh, the face part came off. Oh, it's magnetic. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. This is so much smaller than I expected. It just feels so high quality. Ooh. My wedding ring just hit it. I'm worried about using this. <laughs> I'm so worried I'm gonna damage it. I really wanna power these guys on. As far as tech specs, this is essentially a MacBook on your face. It's got an M2 chip and an R1 chip, which is new for the Vision Pro. There are tons of cameras and sensors inside the device to give you the most realistic and spatial feel. It also has these speakers on either side, which provide spatial audio. So when you look in one direction, it sounds like the sound is staying in the same location, which is very cool. Plugging in the device for the first time, here we go. It looks like it's got a locking mechanism. I hope I'm not doing this wrong. I will say this face covering comes off really easily. Like while I'm trying to hold this to put in the, the power adapter, the face covering keeps popping off. I kind of want to try and edit this video on this. Okay, let me, this is very embarrassing. Cause I'm sure everyone's gonna not have any issues with it. Oh, okay. Put it in at a 45 degree angle. So there you go. 45 degree angle. There we go. Hey, I think I got it. <laughs> got it. There's the Apple logo on the front. So apparently it takes about a minute for this to power on. Let me throw it on my head. Sorry for the hat hair. And nothing yet. Oh, there we go. Press and hold to align. Why am I seeing so much light at the bottom of the light shield? Oh, there's the camera. Oh, wow. All right. All right, here we are. Basically back in the studio. It's saying hello across the front. Like, a, like an iPhone, whenever you get a new iPhone. This is heavy on my face, so I'm not gonna lie. It does feel secure, but it is heavier than I expected. Uh, press digital crown to begin. The camera quality is decent. It's better than the MetaQuest 3 for sure. It's in color, obviously. Uh, bring iPhone or I... I don't know where my iPhone is. Oh my gosh. Let me go grab it and see if I can find it. Found my iPhone. It was in the office. You know, it's not that hard to walk around in this. The one problem I'm having is that because I don't get a full field of view, like I bump into things on the side of me, but actually like the response time of the camera is pretty decent. <laughs> like I had no problems like picking up my phone. Um, I guess it is a little bit slower than real life, like, but not noticeably so. Set up Apple Vision Pro. Here we go. Unlock to continue. I just, I just unlocked. There's like this nice like music in the background going, ooh, ooh. I'm not gonna lie. This is heavy on my face. This is heavier than I expected. Also, can you see my eyes? Or is there just nothing going on on the outside right now? I have no idea. All right, uh, it's really fast. Oh, I didn't get all of them. It kind of is heavy. It kind of is heavy. Like with a lot of other VR headsets, you got some sort of counterweight in the back, but in this one, I mean, okay, again, don't mind the hair. Yes, it's holding my head in perfectly. Apple Vision Pro can recognize the unique aspects of your iris to allow secure access to features. Do I want them to have access to my iris? I don't know. You really have to look at exactly what you are trying to click or else it will not register. Control center, gotcha. Oh, I can screen record here, let's do that. And we are recording, great. All right, sorry for the messy studio, guys. This is what it looks like if you guys have been wondering. This is where I film all my sneaker videos and uh, my tech videos. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Discover Vision OS apps. I'm okay on that. Let's see what compatible apps we have here. Uh, news, voice memos, podcast, shortcuts, stocks, maps, suit podcast. This is kind of cool. So, okay, so if I want to move this around, look down there. Okay, look down there. You really have to look at whatever it is. It does leave a shadow on the desk. Though, which is really really cool. I love that. That's so cool. I keep thinking I have to like reach up and do something to it, but I don't. Um, I don't know who the Zane Lowe show is. Sorry, Zane. Uh, let's open up news as well. Excuse me, bud. Excuse me, Zane. Zane, you're always in the way, bud. 
Put that there. I don't care about Apple News enough to sign up for it. It does feel like I'm moving it around, which is crazy. So I'm gonna set that here. That's cool. I have them all there. Good way to cover up this messy studio. What do we got here? Music, Seth Fowler's station. I don't wanna know what's in that. It's probably a lot of, uh, I actually don't know what it is. Let's see, let's see what's in there. Hey, Chance, okay. Not mad at that, what's next? Okay, I don't listen to Taylor, that's, that's a mistake. Scrolling, that's easy, that's easy. But you really do have to look at everything that you're trying to do. Actually, how does that look? Can you see my eyes? If you can, it's creepy. I can sort of see it there, but not that well. That's kind of creepy. That's kind of creepy. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, let's open up something else. We've got so many windows open right now. Oh, what? Here, can I center it? Here we go. Whoa, that's kind of wild. So I'm looking at this photo, this like 3D photo. It's like as if I'm there. And then around me, I've got this, I don't know, it's a hard desert, some sort of desert situation going on. Um, I'm gonna close out of all of this. Is there an easy way or a quick way to close out of all of this? I see, someone's texting me in my headset. I kind of don't want to look at the text, but I will. Purely because I have to. Let's see what they are. Let's try mindfulness. My face, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if it's my eyebrows feeling like they're holding up the weight from this thing, but like genuinely, my goodness. It's heavy on my face. All right, <laughs> I'm over this. I keep moving my hands to like try and click things, but you literally just keep them. I'm done, I'm done, I'm out. I'm done guys. Thanks. Okay, what do we got next? Oh, it's nighttime on the white sands. I mean, this is cool. Don't get me wrong. And I can kind of get less immersed and just be more in the studio in apparently nighttime mode, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not going to lie. Oh, uh, see light mode. There we go. So we've got the messy studio over here. We've got the sands in front of me. I can become more immersed in the sands if I want. The sands of time, Prince of Persia. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. These are the different settings. Let's see the moon. Here we go. Oh. Look at this. It really does feel 3D. It's weird not being able to see your feet. I'm not gonna lie. Let's do uh, Mount Hood. This is the one everyone uses for their promos. Let's see. It's cool that the water's moving. There's Mount Hood, I'm assuming, right? It doesn't look entirely realistic. It definitely is computer generated. Like this is not a real photo or video um, because you can see the textures are kind of flat in certain areas. I don't know. It's not bad. It's cool hearing the spatial audio with like the birds and stuff in the background. Like I hear a bird over here. Some dude yelling over there. I'm kidding about that. Um, <laughs> no, it's cool. I don't know if I have any videos mid-edit. I think I do actually. Oh, uh, look at this. Okay, great. So it says connect here. So I'm going to connect. Let's see what happens. What I'm hoping is that it pops out. There we go. That's crazy. And I can edit the video as if I've got a giant monitor in front of me. Maybe I have to look down there. I think it looks, you can only look at the side to make it bigger. There we go. And then if I want to, I can put myself back at Mount Hood <laughs> while I edit. That's crazy. Okay, so I should be able to use, okay, it's too big now. This is too large. Now I can just edit here. This is kind of cool. So I can still use my laptop. I can't see any of the buttons. Wait, I've got to come back out of Mount Hood. Sorry, Mount Hood, I gotta leave. Okay, now I can see the buttons like this. Here we go. So I wanna zoom out, zoom in. Okay, let's get back a little bit into Mount Hood. Just enough so that I can see my keyboard, but not enough to where I, okay. This is great, this is awesome. Now the resolution's really, really good on this. I'm not gonna lie. This is an unedited video. And so please don't be hating. And as unbiased as possible, this video is not sponsored by anybody. Well, not it wasn't. If you guys didn't know, my main channel is the sneaker channel. Wow, this is cool. I actually kind of dig this. Now, I will say I'm used to editing on my laptop, so it's not like significantly better. It is nice to have a screen that's larger. Can I make the screen wider from just... No, I can't. I have to use my hands. There we go. Oh, so can I get right in there? Oh. Move back, you're too close to an object. Yeah, it's my laptop, I know. That is cool. Now, if this wasn't so friggin' heavy on my face, I'm gonna try the other headband because this is a little bit much. Um, this is kind of wild. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the entire headset. The fact that I can use it as a monitor for this laptop in Mount Hood is pretty rad, I'm not gonna lie. Now, the problem is here, this is a $3,500 headset, so I'm basically paying $3,500 for a monitor. Um, so there's that. Can I still go back to the home screen and just have this as a window? I can. Okay, here is the typing thing that I was really concerned about. Um, can I Siri it? Yo, my headset just came in, you wanna FaceTime? My headset just came in, great, thanks Siri. <laughs> I'll just send that. Got it, let me make my my face sonar or whatever it is. My fursona, 
Is that the, the furry thing? I'm not doing that. Uh, and before I do that, I do want to try out the other headband because I'm going to be honest with you, this headband is is killing me. It's like my eyebrows are, are killing me. I thought I was going to be cool with this this uh, headset, but or this headband, but I really need to use this one because I'm telling you, my eyebrows just feel like they have this insane workout. So let me plop this one off. Easier than I thought. Great. There we go. Okay, now to install. Attach the dual loop band with the upper snap orientation vertically. All right, so this needs... Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Now, hopefully this will alleviate some of the pain that I'm having when it comes to have, having all the weight in my eyebrows. It seems like it is helping a little bit. It doesn't feel as secure though, I'm not gonna lie. It really doesn't feel as secure. I'm kind of bummed out about that. The solo knit band does look better though. Can you see my eyes? Uh -uh. You can't, really? There's a lot of lights in here. Oh. Oh, that's probably why, yeah. Wait, how do I screen record? There we go. Now let's see how to set up this FaceTime persona. Here we go. Capture how you'll appear in FaceTime and other calls with personalized eyesight. Oh, and personalized eyesight. Refine your hand setup. So right now it's scanning my hands for this FaceTime thing. To and set up your persona, oh, you'll remove right. Apple Vision Pro to capture your appearance. Take your time getting ready and make sure nothing's covering your face. To start capturing, hold Apple Vision Pro at eye level. Keep your arms right, and shoulders relaxed. Can I put on my hat back? Let's try it with my Align hat on backwards. Align your entire face within Let's the frame. Happens. Bring Vision Pro closer. Align your entire face within the frame. Slowly turn your head to the right. Now, tilt your head up. Close your eyes for a moment. Okay, here we go. Let's see it. Let's see my persona. <laughs> Oh, sh oh <laughs> no, that is, that's awful. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Is that what I, that's not what I look like. I look like a police sketch. I look terrifying. I literally have to keep my eyes open like this so that it, the headset stays on my face. Oh my, my fingers are not actually locked together. There we go. Let's recapture. I can't, this is just the worst. Here we go. Let's try it again. My hair is gonna look Align awful, but that's fine. Face within the frame. Let's try this again. Position. Hopefully this one's not as terrifying. I bet you can have fun with like messing with the uh, the personas and creating just ridiculous personas. Oh, all right. I still look way more surprised than, and my face looks a lot wider than it actually is. I do look terrifying. Just as bad. It's it's honestly worse. I've got a cone head now. No, it's, it's the this is worse. I should have kept the head on. So that pretty much wraps up the unboxing of the Apple Vision Pro. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know how to feel about this device. I can understand that there are some use cases for it, like maybe working on a larger monitor when you're editing a video or doing something on your laptop. There are probably some apps that I will try for the review that are gonna be useful in some way, but right now, as purely a VR or, or I guess spatial computing headset, I don't know if it warrants $3,500. Now again, I will talk about this more in the review and I'm gonna try it out for a week and see if I like it and then give you guys a full review and let you know what I think of it after using it every single day. But right now, purely based on the unboxing, it's very cool, but I don't know if it's worth the $3,500. That's just me though. It kind of feels like an iPhone before it had the app store. And I'm sure once there's some utility for this thing, it'll be great. But right now, honestly, it just feels like a fun piece of tech. But hey, let me know your thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.